Good evening and welcome to the news of Ashuruk TV. Today's stories include Al Kabashi visits South Kurdistan State to inspect the situation following the recent incidents. Prime Minister Abdullah Hamdok meets with doctors to curb the recent assault on the medical staff. The Ministry of, Religion, of Religious Affairs suspends prayers in the mosques and public squares. The member of the Transitional Sovereign Council, Shamseddin Kabashi, has issued a number of decisions and directives regarding the events that occurred in the Kadugli city of South Kurdistan State, the most important of which was the immediate initiation of collecting weapons outside the framework of the regular forces and conducting a large-scale search in regards and reconsidering the exemptions granted earlier on carrying of weapons and holding accountable of all the unruly elements of the regular forces who have caused the recent events. This came when he chaired in Kadugli a joint meeting with the government and the security committee of South Kurdistan State. At a meeting, al Kabashi and the accompanying delegates were informed through a report of the state government. Mr. Rashid Abdel Hamid on the general situation in the state, the supply of strategic commodities and recent events in the state. The South Sudanese chief mediator, Mr. Tud Dilwak, said that Mr. Minni Minnawi's group is participating in the Juba process as the Sudan Liberation Movement, not as a faction of the Sudan's Revolutionary Front. On the 18th of May, the SLMMM broke away from the SFR and de declared its commitment to the peace process as the SFR under the leadership of Mr. Minni Minnawi. Mr. Delwag, who made his statement after a meeting with the SFR leadership, wanted to close the door for further development that might complicate the peace process, which is supposed to end on the 20th of June. The Sudan's liberation movement, led by Mr. Menni Minnawi, announced its defection from the Revolutionary Front, he said, and added it is committed to the peace process and coordination with the SFR, especially in the Darfur track. The forces of the Freedom and, Ch and Change Coalition has decided to form a joint committee aimed at discussing the outstanding issues in the National Ummah Party. The Secretary General of the Sudanese Congress Party, Mr. Khaled Omar Youssef, stated that the communications are underway between the forces of Freedom and Change and the Ummah Party to discuss their outstanding agreement. On April 23, the National Ummah Party, led by Mr. Sadiq Al Mahdi, suspended its activities in all the structures of the Declaration of Freedom and Change Coalition and called for a conference for the revolutionary forces to form the structures of the transitional period. <music> Prime Minister Abdullah Hamdok will hold an important meeting with the representative of the health and medical workers in the presence of the Minister of Justice, Mr. Nasruddin Abdelbari, and Minister of Health, Dr. Akram Tom, and other officials. The meeting will discuss the issues of the repeated violations and attacks on the health workers and medical services by citizens in the wake of Wednesday's attack on the medical staff in Omdurman Hospital. Suna, put out that the meeting, which started late on Friday evening, will discuss the demands of the doctors and the health staff for enforcing laws and legislations that guarantee legal protection for them during their work and enable them to perform their duties towards their patients. The doctors have threatened to go on strike next Sunday to protest the repeated infringements against them. The head of the Sovereign Council, Lieutenant General Abdel Fattah al-Burhan, received a congratulatory phone call from the UAE President, Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed al-Nahyan, on the occasion of Eid al-Iftar. Al-Burhan received a similar phone call from the Deputy President, Prime Minister, and Dubai Governor, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed al-Nahyan. On the other hand, the Sudanese 
community in the United Arab Emirates announced the delivery of the first shipment of medical supplies as part of the Support to the Nation campaign with the framework of the Urgent Aid Package for the Health Sector in Sudan, which the committee pledged to extend to the health sector and enhance its role in providing the necessary medical care. In light of the current conditions that the world is living as a result of the COVID-19 epidemic and its repercussions, the Sudanese community in the UAE as represented in the board of the Sudanese Community Club, in the Sudanese Labor Council, and the Sudanese academics at the University of Emirates and the Sudanese medical groups in the UAE. Police sources have reported that 43 people were killed and 31 were wounded in the tragic accident in the Shangili Tubaya area in Dar es Salaam in North Darfur state after a heavy tractor collided with a lorry carrying many passengers. The police press office said in a statement on Thursday that as soon as the accident occurred and upon reporting to the police, emergency teams rushed the seriously injured to Al Fashir Hospital by an armed vehicle, while the fire that broke out in the tractor was extinguished. And some cases were sent to the Sangili Tobaya Hospital to receive first aid and the necessary treatments. The Minister of Religious Affairs has announced the suspension of the Eid prayers in all the mosques and public squares throughout the country in order to protect the people from infection, noting that this came according to the specialist recommendation over the rapid spread of the COVID-19. In the statement read by Mr. Nasruddin Mufarrah, who is the Minister of Religious Affairs and Endowment, he said, that the ministry directed the all Muslims to conduct Eid prayers at home. The Darfur hybrid operation known as UNIMAD reported for the first time suspected cases of coronavirus amongst its personnel in its base of Al Fashir in North Darfur state. Sudan is now turning into a regional epidemic for the COVID-19 with 3,378 confirmed cases including 137 deaths. In North Darfur, there are 16 confirmed cases, while there are 25 infected people in South Darfur, 14 in West Darfur, 8 in East Darfur, and 2 in Central Darfur. In a statement released by UNIMED, it said that seven cases of suspected coronavirus were detected amongst its personnel operating at its logistics base in Al Fashir. It is important to note that all affected personnel, including staff who have possibly come into contact with them, are currently adhering to strict quarantine and isolation protocols, said the UNIMAT official. The drug that the US President Donald Trump has said he was taking to ward off COVID-19 has been found to actually increase the risk of patients with the disease of dying. This came from a study in the Lancet Institute. The study said there were no benefits to treating patients with the anti-malaria drug hydrochloroquine. Mr. Trump said he was taking the drug despite public health officials warning that it could cause heart problems. The president has repeatedly promoted the drug against medical advice. Hydrochloroquine is safe for malaria and conditions like lupus and arthritis, but no clinical trials have recommended the use of hydrochloroquine for coronavirus. Reminding headlines. Al Kabashi visits South Kurdistan state to inspect the situation following the recent incidents. Prime Minister Abdullah Hamdok meets with doctors to curb the recent assaults on the medical staff. The Ministry of, Religion, of Religious Affairs suspends prayers in the mosques and public squares. That's all from Al-Shuruq TV, Eid Mubarak. <laughs>